Hello guys, Ryan House here, and welcome to our 8th episode of Europa Universalis Rome. And today, we're going to continue expanding our military might, picking on the barbarians to the north, and uh, looking at uh, war against Macedonia here. So it's coming together nicely. I wonder if we declared war, no cast a spell. Yep, yep. <clears throat> so we wiped out the barbarians. That's good. I don't have to worry about them anymore. And let's see here. I'm going to merge. Now, one of the subscribers recommended that we start sending out uh, loyal units out into the wilderness instead of our velites. I kind of like that idea a lot. So we'll start peeling off these units that are loyal, not to Rome, but to commanders, individual people. So we're going to peel them off like so, and they will serve out on the fringes. That's what happens to the disloyal. They get to go serve their time out in the frontier. All right. Good, good. <clears throat> Quite a bit of money. Nothing we can build yet. Pretty sure. Yeah, nothing we can build just yet. Barbarian revolts. It has happened. Oh dear. Benonia, of all places. Let's go there. Not worried at all. Yeah, there we go. And we get some more slaves. Excellent. There's quite a few slaves coming in quite a few. That's good. More fr uh, free men and citizens for Rome. And more slaves. And we're getting really close to expanding here. See, Benonia is becoming uh, quite civilized now. It's good. I'm excited for this Let's Play. I'm excited to uh, start expanding outwards from where we've where we've been. More more colonization, getting these two provinces here soon enough, and then Liguria, their civilization's coming up, so we will be able to get uh, ah technology. We'll be able to get uh, Volcanti and Allobrogia. All right, so construction technology. May trigger the form, stockade, and irrigation, our first buildings. Excellent. That's going to be very good. Along with all of these, this is going to be great. Mass charge, armor, horse archers, disciplined missile troops, stepped cavalry, and noble cavalry. Excellent. That is very, very good. Very good. <clears throat> oh, another thing I didn't uh, discuss about mercenaries. Over here is a number. That's basically the number of mercenary regiments available. And it will uh, list uh, from where they're coming, most of them are in Massilia, so we can we can uh, recruit them from there. And over here in Benonia, oops, wrong button. They don't have any mercenaries, so they're all around this area right now. The mercenaries are, and none over here. So quite a few mercenaries out on our frontier.
And as you can see, the Seleucids have been getting pounded by the Egyptians and the Armenians combined. It looks like they're getting some territories back right around here. But we'll see if they're able to hold their empire together. Also, another thing I noticed, Epirus, they're allied with Carthage. They're also giving tribute to Carthage. So I'm sure Carthage has been getting, uh, has been uh, punishing Epirus for their loss in the war that they were fighting earlier. Let's see, Epirus, they have the mission, no more tributes. They don't want to pay tribute anymore. Let's see what Carthage, their mission is. Their mission is colonize southern Iberia, which is over here. This would be southern Iberia. Prosecution. The fact that Gaius Fundanius Fundulus has witnessed some rather shady activities has somewhat reached uh, one of the senators. Apparently one of the murder victims is a close friend of his, and now he wants Gaius Fundanius Fundulus to help find the killers. Huh. Uh, I'm going to have him help. I know the populace are going to gain a senator, but there's also a 20% chance this man might die. So I don't think he did die, though. Yes, excellent. I can recruit another regiment. Let's see, what do we have here? 8,000 archers, 12,000 heavy infantry. What would be a good complement for that group of men? I think another ar archer would do better. Let's recruit another archer. Alright. Oh no. Well my friends, we have our very first we have our very first populist leader. And as you can see, the National, National Revolt Risk modifier went up by one, and stability costs are now increased by 25%. So, there you go. It's happened. Yep, it has happened. And I'm wondering, he's content, chaste, suspicious, and assertive. Well, two years with this man in charge, and then we'll have Gnaeus Cornelius Blasio take charge. So, uh, not too much to worry about that. The revolts, though. <coughs> the revolts don't look that much higher. They like, actually look lower right now. Yeah, the minimum revolt risk is 7.8% So, for these areas because of nationalism. So they won't... Uh, minimum revolt risk will never go down below until time has passed. But overall, the rest of Rome looks stable because we're at stability plus 3. So, we'll do fine, even with the populist leader. Okay, you can see our national manpower pool has been going up. That's good. Okay, I'm going to speed it up here. So we have about six and a half years, and we need to prepare for war against Macedonia. Major discovery, noble cavalry. Cavalry costs are increased by 10%, but cavalry discipline is plus 20%. Oh, Consul, we have discovered the basics of noble cavalry, known as the Equite in Rome, and as the companions in the Hellenistic successor states, these cavalry units formed a powerful elite force that could tilt any battle. However, the very restrictive nature of the recruitment 
would keep cavalry forces small. All right, and civic technology advanced, religious organization and patronage. Ex excellent. We can invoke an omen. I'm going to do population growth. All right, and we succeeded. Population growth plus five percent. Excellent. Very happy about that. See, all of our Roman provinces are growing quite fast. All right, Seleucid Empire accepted peace with Egypt in the following terms. They would cede Phoenicia, Perga, Phoenicia. Oh, there's the Phoenicians. Okay, so Phoenicia was over here. I thought it was over here, but it's actually along the coast over here. Okay, uh, Perga, uh, Pos Poseidia, and they will pay seven gold. Wow, Egypt got a nice chunk out of the Seleucids. We'll see if Armenia can get anything out of the Seleucids as well. But this kingdom was was weak and crumbling. Where's their capital at? Let's see. Let's zoom in. Here it is. Seleucia. He's Greek. Religion is Greek. It's a Greek empire here. He's the Basilius, basically king, ruler. Look at his wealth. Look at all that wealth. Yep. Wow. Apparently he's a good leader as well. <laughs> it's confidence. Excellent. Oh yeah, culture Greek. Yep. Lots and lots of Greeks. Well, we will have him discuss the matter with friends. Alrighty, excellent. Carthage still has a high revolt risk across all their provinces. Major discovery, irrigation. Let's pause it. Let's slow it down a little bit. Here come the barbarians. All right, irrigation. O oh, Consul, we have discovered the basics of irrigation. The ability to irrigate land was vital for the growth of agriculture. Although originally developed for use of land where rainfall was marginal, it was also useful in areas where rainfall was good, as it would make farming less dependent on rainfall. You can now build irrigation. That's excellent. So now it's time for vast building projects. Cross Rome wherever they need irrigation. Okay. What are these numbers here? 47.7. Hmm. I'm guessing that's the cost, yeah. Okay, because of the e-dial that we have, the costs associated with building are less. In fact, maybe we can get a better e-dial current e-dial. Uh, 11 finesse. I think only charisma matters though. Yes. So let's get the highest charisma guy we can find. Titus Mamilius Polis. He wants to become ruler. That's his loyalty. His loyalty is dreadful. Alright, well we'll get the second best because I don't want an unloyal man in office. Uh, Marcus Attilius Regulus. Mm, no, he wants to become Army Quaestor, which we can do for him. Okay. This guy's just as unloyal as well. <laughs> Got so many unloyal people. The only man fit for the job is this man here. He is stressed, however. Who? Okay, the current one has Charisma 4. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Just looking at saving us money because we're about to do big building projects all over Rome. Okay. Why is he so unloyal? Oh, it's, he has so many... So many units, huh? Alright, well, let's appoint the Army Quaestor first, then. Army Quaestor. Okay, this man. 
Naval Quaestor. This man, Edile. Let's see if anybody that wants to be Edile is good. He's assertive. He wants a title. He's assertive and wants a title, and not from the ruler's faction. Hmm. Okay, we could do with Lucius Posthumius. And then the civic faction, currently ran by this man. And it's going to take Charisma as well, or Praetor. Nobody wants to be Praetor. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll leave him there, I'm guessing. Uh, maybe we can get somebody better. Somebody better. Like this man here. He's ambitious. Is that why his loyalty is so low? But if we gave him... Uh, see, I'm afraid we appoint him. And then he'll never give it up. This man's rather loyal. He wants a title. Okay, we'll have appoint him then. Okay, so yes, we were building, right? Okay, so let's go build. Actually, let's look at our cities here. And what exactly does irrigation do for us? Ah, local tax modifier plus 50%. That's really nice. Okay. Well, in that case, let's look around here real quick. Wow, over here. Look at that tax modifier. Okay, we'll build... Uh, Irrigation here. It's going to take a couple years. And we have plenty of money. It's going to find the highest tax provinces first. They're so high because they have 13 slaves. It's crazy. Campania. Alright, Samnium, Agar Brutius, Okay, they require grain, horses, wine, fish, elephant, spices, cloth, and purus. Really? For irrigation? Really? Hmm, let me see here. So we can't just build irrigation anywhere. If we look at the trade, okay, so they have wood. So grain, horses, wine, fish, elephants, spices, cloth, and papyrus. Okay. So we couldn't build it in any of these provinces. We could build it in Bononia. Okay. We could build it here. We could build it here. Syracuse probably better. And we could build it here in Corsica. Okay. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, they're limited to where you can build them. So we couldn't build it in iron, stone, salt, uh, amber, wine. Oh, we can build it with wine, wine areas. So basically, papyrus, cloth, spices, elephants, any organic areas we could build it at. In organic areas, we couldn't. Well, I guess wood would be considered organic, but you guys get what I'm, what I'm talking about. Okay. All right, so we've built irrigation everywhere that we possibly can. Uh, let's see here. Marcus Attilius Regulus. All right, so he is now Army Quaestor. 
Marcus Fulvius Flaccus. He is now Navy Quaestor. He is an excellent, he's pretty excellent, solid average stats, above average stats. Lucius Posthumius Magellus, he's Edil, he's definitely somebody to keep an eye on right here. This man here is 52. And Lucius Manulius Vulso, uh, get Marcus Aemilius Paulus a job. Excellence. Alright, good, good, good. And might as well, while we're doing this, check out everybody and see if we can give any small minor titles away. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Not bad. And I haven't checked out the ruler family. Wow. That's a pretty big family. The Primas, Scipios, Secundas, Rufinus, uh, Lentulus, Blasio, and Miranda. They're all related to each other. <coughs> through marriage, or etc. Okay. Pretty big family family line there, from what I can see. Alright, so here come the barbarians. They'll be there on the 14th. Provincial citizenship. Uh, the more prominent among the freemen of Samnium demand full citizenship. Huh. Okay, we're going to lose freemen, but we'll gain citizens. Oh yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. I'm a, I'm okay with a little more balanced free men to citizen ratio. Okay, they have earned it. I'm not. Uh, that's gonna boost up our research, so I'm not complaining. That's fine. Major discovery: patronage, monthly loyalty gained. Yes. When a country left its tribal past, the traditional bonds that held the society together would quite often be left behind. Thus, the ruler needed new tools to keep the powerful on board. Patronage was a powerful tool to keep society glued together. So they're learning how to keep a society together uh, instead of just considering each other part of the same tribe. So Rome's starting to get large. Look at all those citizens in Rome. All those freemen as well. Big cities. Rome just has high population areas. Huh. What? Xerxes Arid? <laughs> Oh, it's not Xerxes, as in the Xerxes from uh, the movie Sparta. Alright, wiped out all those barbarians. Slaves. Excellent. He's not getting too many loyal units, that's good. He has none as well. Fighting barbarians, you don't get a lot of loyal units apparently. That's not bad, if that's the case. Okay. And our troop limit continues to rise, as you can see. Let's get uh, 10,000 archers and uh, two more thousand, 2,000 more principe. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see if he kills her, Claudia. And stockade. We can now build stockade. Although most settlements have basic defenses, these would do no more than slow an army down. However, with improvements in construction technology, it becomes possible to create a more permanent defensive structure. Although these simple walls would be dwarfed by later structures, in their day they were state of the art. And you guys are familiar with what a stockade is, I'm sure the majority of you guys are, but for those who don't know what a stockade is, it's basically a, a round wooden fort design. Um, they would use uh, large uh, cut down trees to create the posts and line them up side by side all the way around the stockade. They'd have towers for defense and a, a, a bridge and you know a moat and probably like defensive sharp wooden spikes along the sides and uh, 
Rome built a lot of them. They had stockades everywhere. Okay. So, uh, stockades now, let's see here. Stockade, fort level plus one. Yep. So we would want to build stockades. And all the cities that only have 1,000 uh, men. Because they're only at fort level one. So stockades will boost it up to fort level two. We can do that across our empire. So that's something we can start doing. In fact, building those stockades uh, along our frontier would be excellent. Okay, career boost. Spurious Crevilius Maximus has really made some career advancements lately, but at the same time he has made some pretty powerful enemies, and now he lives under constant fear of being attacked. He should really try to be a bit more discreet. This man here, he's 60 years old. Hmm. There's nothing to worry about. Let's try it. I like the trait brave. Yeah, it looks like he's brave. What's Pro Praetor? Oh yes, the man that was Praetor before. Of course, Pro Praetor. Alright, excellent. So he is brave. Uh, unit loyalty chance plus 5%. Ah! Maybe I don't want people as brave. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Didn't know what that uh, characteristic actually did. Okay. Alright, we'll remember that from now on. We don't want brave leaders in Rome, <laughs> apparently. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, I don't mind if a man has loyal units under his control. I do mind if he has several loyal units under his control. Like, too many to the point where he becomes disloyal. Then that is a problem. Alright, so I was going to build... Uh, more archers and two more units of Principe. And that's a nice nice stack that we got there. Nice legion here. The first legion. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So they had lost one of the units out there. The Vocanti. So we pushed back the barbarians pretty much. Where are they going? Oh, you know what? I bet a horde is on its way south right now. There's no reason that they would be moving out unless a large army was about to move in. So we'll see. We'll see what happens up there. We sell, shall see more rebellions all all over Carthage, popping up all over the place. Yep, I was right. Barbarians have arrived here. Their civilization is 31.5. And now it's 20.9. Oh my man, this place is so uncivilized. It is just so uncivilized. But now they're strong. Look, they have eight units to pay for. <laughs> yep. Okay, so let's build a fort in Bononia. Oh yes, they're currently already building something, so we'll build one here in Liguria instead. Take a little under a year to build. The truth with the Carthage is about to expire. Hmm. And uh, naval technology advance. No, no bonus yet. I'm wondering if there will be one for next time. Yes, uh, the next naval advance we will get marines. That's good. Excellent. Okay, so... Our army is just about ready. 22,000, and with these men, it will be at 24,000. 
And then if I peel off one, two, another two thousand, that should be that should be pretty good. And then what do we have here? Militia and archers and heavy infantry. Go peel, peel off uh, one of the heavy infantry. Okay, so that's going to be a nice, uh, nice army that we have assembled in Rome, and a nice army to take over to uh, the Greek area, and perhaps we can ask for military access. They might give it to us. Okay, I'm wondering then. If we can demand tribute from them, ah, uh, they rejected. <laughs> Might as well try. People recognize you. She's prominent, and you have a warm personality. He is loving. <laughs> See what loving does. Loving, charisma, excellent. And Crete rejected our uh, generous offer for them to pay us tributes. Those fools. <laughs> Yep. Uh, yeah, quite a large army actually coming, so I'll keep that unit there. Hmm. We should be able to stop 13 units. Okay. Religion, Mars, Invoke. Yes, it succeeded. Good. So now we'll definitely be able to hold that. And form it up. That's not bad. Okay, so 26,000. That's what we'll have to work with. Okay. Not bad, not bad. And our fleet hasn't been growing. We haven't been expanding our fleet at all. Hmm. Oh, taking some casualties. Hmm. This might cut it pretty close. No, we have lost. We lost. So I'll move the army from Bononia, and they'll just swap. Hopefully this army here, with Blasio here, can defeat those barbarians. You know, when we took those troops away, we we definitely weakened them. So, that's what happens. But, we are going to be preparing for Macedonia here. Alright. So, would Epirus give us military access? Maybe. And what about the Illyrians? Maybe. So we'll try both of those places. Okay, so they both al allowed us uh, military access to their lands. That's, that's good. So now we have two avenues of approach. Epirus and Talanti. Uh, those are both good accesses uh, to Macedonia. Because I'm thinking, I was thinking we'd land in Sparta and then move our way up. But why not try to bleed them dry a little bit with some uh, field engagements out of Epirus or Talanti. Alright. Huh. Gaius Sulpicius Peterculus. He died. Ah, uh, yes. Good. Happy. He wasn't, um, let's see here. Anybody too important? I hope. And yeah, it would be nice to have that fort built here. So we'll park our troops in Epirus. Oh yeah, he's he's a better commander. 
There you go. Good job. Now, he still has no loyal units. But we'll keep him there. And here's another Barbarian Horde incoming. We're going to pull all of our troops back. Because Barbarians seem to have sprouted up everywhere. And the 4th Legion can go up north. While we prepare for the war against Macedonia. Now, wow, 28 units, huh? 28 units. They're building a forum. Forums are nice, because they allow you to build, um, have more trade routes available, which is always a good thing, means more money. Gosh, well, all these barbarians just started popping up everywhere. It's going to take some time to get that army up there. Changri. Oh, they're going to they're going to die. That unit's going to get killed. This unit should make it. And here, I don't think we're going to have enough men. He has four loyal units. Yeah, that unit got wiped out, but it was a loyal unit. And I'm going to move all of our guys over here. Everybody to Liguria to fight off these barbarians. How about that? Barbarians everywhere. Yep. Barbarians at the gate of Rome. Vengeance! The Ducks of Magna Gracia taking it out on Gaius Claudius Canyon. Oh, man. Wow. Oh, no. So he killed the other man. Okay, that's not that bad. Okay. So he killed our ducks, though. Now somebody wants to be ducks. Somebody wants to be Ducks of Magna Gracia. Everybody was clamoring for Magna Gracia for a while. Now nobody wants to be Ducks of Magna Gracia. One of the most prestigious places of all. Certainly somebody does. You killed the man. Why don't you become the Ducks? There you go, pal. Jeez. And I'm wondering if we have a better leader. Oh, we can have this unloyal bastard right here lead. <laughs> Does anyone want to be legate? No. Nobody wants to be legate. Alright. So I want to handle these barbarians, and then they'll arrive 2nd of March, and they'll arrive February 5th. And then this army is going to take some time. Hmm. This is bad. They're trying to hold. They're trying. Uh, but they lost. And our second army arrived. They're also trying, desperately. <laughs> We're losing so many men to these barbarians. Ah, uh, we lost that battle as well. So, both of our armies were defeated on the frontier. Our third army is coming up. You know what? We're just going to show these barbarians who's boss real quick. Ah, religious organization. Uh, the building of huge temples has been going on since time immemorial. However, the ability to produce a large number of smaller temples for the general populace, strengthening the power of religious omens in the eyes of the people. Excellent. Temples. Temple building. I like that. It's a very Roman thing to do. 
Alright, so we'll pull our large army over here. Still can't believe that. Hmm. So the stockade's gonna be completed at least. Stockade was built. Huh. What's his loyalty at? Uh, it's okay. And bless you. Bless you. He's the new consul. Good. Oh boy. I don't want them conquering this place. No! Ah, they conquered Liguria. And they decreased the civilization value. Oh, look at that. Oh, they, we've been set back like decades, man. That really sucks. That really, really sucks. That is horrible. Hmm. <clears throat> it happens. This is, uh, this happens. This happens all the time. We didn't want it to happen this early, but it did. Uh, we just built that stockade, too. Man. Hopefully we'll kill these barbarians now. Get them! Come on, get him. There we go, killed them. We got quite a bit of wealth and slaves. And then we're going to get Massilia as well. Help out our neighbors here. They want a trade agreement, we'll accept. Gosh, Liguria just got raped. Because two barbarians came in, so got raped back to back. Tcha. Starting to think it was a, a bad thing to strip those legions. Alright, hopefully kill these guys. But our legions, they did fight hard, so it's not uh, due to a lack of uh, wanting to win. We're going to follow them into Vukanti and just finish these bastards off. I think they'll meet up in Rome. And then we'll go fight the Macedonians. Give them your full support. Fall into Alabroge. Floris has died. Is, is he our, uh... No, he wasn't. He was the former consul. So, uh, all of you guys hoping Liguria would do well? Well, it's too bad. However, um, Vasily did recover quite fast. They recovered really fast. And, uh, they should too. There we go, wipe them out. Barbarians were defeated, we got slaves and money. Hmm. <clears throat> We're going to move this army here and this army there to Epirus and fight the Macedonians face to face. Hopefully, hopefully with the blessing of Mars. Yes. Religious factions in power. It's a good thing. Very good. I think we should hold a triumph. Let's hold a triumph, shall we? Hold a triumph for... <laughs> hold a triumph for Publius Cornelius Rufinius.
bad timing. One of the senators has proposed that anyone that is found guilty of bribery will be permanently excluded from his office, considering that one of Gnaeus Cornelius Blasio's friends stands accused of that same crime. Doesn't make this the best of opportunities to pass such a law. Let it pass. Military faction gains strength and revenge. Oh man, somebody's attacking him. He's uh he might be wounded or maimed. So let's see. Nothing? Nothing happened. So he's okay. Neither wounded nor maimed. <laughs> Vengeance! Wow, he has quite a few rivals. Octavia Tertia. <laughs> die, Octavia Tertia. No, she didn't die. <coughs> Alright. So, guys. Liguria was pillaged. Not too good, but Benonia is doing very well. And we should be expanding to Gallia, Cisalpina, and Palio Veneti. Soon enough, we're going to go pick up these troops in Rome. We'll station them in Talenti, I believe. And we can start building forms as well. Excellent. Ah, that's good. That's very good. So a lot of these provinces with only one trade, now we can have more than one trade. Let's, let's start building where we can now. And the temples, what do the temples do? Religious prestige plus one. Okay. Well, that's very good to have more temples. So we'll have more temples and more forums. We'll build a forum first. We get some extra money from trade. Um, we'll just go around on a little building spree here. Rome has all of that already. Etruria, I would like them to have more trade routes because they have iron. So we'll build a forum there. And uh, any other valuable territories that we have. They have iron, plenty of wood, uh, salt, yes. I'm thinking our frontier uh, lands should start trading for uh, stones so they have a higher defensiveness. That would be very good. Yeah, so we'll build a form here. Oh, we can't afford it. Okay. But we'll start building that. We'll get our army over here in Epirus or Talanti. I'm not sure. Epirus has troops stationed there. They have nowhere else to station their troops. So this is going to be a very large army. So I'm thinking if Talanti doesn't have any troops stationed there, we can put some of our own troops over there. Um, supply line 1836. Hmm. Well, we'll see. I guess we'll land in Epirus then. Okay, so we'll combine that army to one gigantic army. And, uh, let's see here. Yes, so one gigantic army to Epirus to challenge the Macedonians. And I believe that we'll start up, uh, we'll pick up the next Let's Play uh, uh, against the Macedonians. So yeah, okay, excellent. We can build forms in three more provinces. We can build ir irrigation at Puli. I didn't, I didn't notice that before. We should do that. Uh, irrigation. There it is. We'll do that definitely. So that'll be good. And then uh, we'll continue building improvements throughout Rome. Uh, let's make sure our borders are secure now. 11,000, 9,000. So we'll move one more, uh, one unit from here. Uh, one of the Welate. We'll move him over to Benonia. Okay. So hopefully our frontier will continue to hold. I know Benonia, they just finished building their uh, irrigation, right? Yes, they did. Okay, so it's pretty much uh, the irrigation is canceling out the cultural difference and the, the religion difference in Benonia right now, which is good. And 
Ligurio is so far behind now. <laughs> Luckily, though, they do have civilized neighbors, so they should bounce back. Well, we'll probably see them in about uh, 510, 520. I don't know. Where they can start expanding. So, we'll definitely get these two provinces, which is which is kind of what I wanted. These areas we'd be bordering, we we we'd be fighting, but regardless, we would have to go to war with them eventually. All right. Okay, just from attrition and those battles that we fought, we're down almost twelve thousand men. Twelve thousand. That's a lot. So it's going to take uh, like eight, nine months just to get all those men back uh, sitting there in Epirus. So after this battle with Macedonia, I mean, we've, we're have we pretty much, uh, let's see here. Yeah, we're pretty much, we've barely gained any of our manpower back. I think we were down to 58,000, so we've gained uh, roughly 20,000 men back since our war with Carthage. And uh, we've been fighting a lot of battles, of course, so... I mean, 975 each month, that's a lot. That's almost a, an entire unit. But we've been taking attrition and losses at the same time, so. And Rome is becoming huge. 70, almost 71 people. See, Carthage is at 43 because they've been colonizing everything. They colonized all of these places right here. One, two, three, four. Yep. That's quite a bit. Oh no! Oh no! Our general just passed away. Oh, that sucks. Okay, well, Quintus Mamilius Vitulus is actually, uh. He's a uh, former legate. He's a capable man. We'll appoint him, and also we might as well give him a little title. We'll give him a Pontifex. His loyalty's all the way up there. Okay, so patronage, submissive. Oh, this is excellent. He's submissive. That's that's excellent. His current ambition is to become ruler. He's well on his way. Uh, he needs a little more. Um, Prominent or pop well, its popularity is very good actually. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, this man we can groom him to become a, a new leader for Rome, and I think we can do it relatively easily too. October 9th. Yeah, definitely. We just need him to uh, win a couple battles, and he's set. He'd be set now. Uh, Rufinius had, I think, like four loyal units, so they will never... Uh, Lucius Melius Barbali, he's, he's been dead for quite some time. <laughs> yeah, I think he has. Yeah, Barbalu's been dead, right? So they were loyal to Barbala, but Barbala is not around anymore. Okay, lack of trade. Our governor in Bononia was disgusted to find out the trade opportunities province are going, are going a begging due to lack of centralized area for trade. We gain a forum. They love the governor even more. Because he just built them a forum. Oh, this man right here. You know what? You're doing a good job there, pal. It's funny, though. He loses loyalty but gains popularity. Okay. So, Bononia needs a new trade route. And I kind of wanted stone. Hmm. There's a slight revolt now. No, there's not. OK, 
Okay, we have grain, we have access. No, we don't have access. Wood? No. No. Grain up there? No. Grain there? Nope. 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 So the only place that we could trade <laughs> would be for this. They don't have hardly any citizens, though. Uh, what would that give us? Net us point twelve. Well, might as well try. And it succeeded. Okay. Very well. And our armory is almost there. Okay, guys. So, when we come back, we'll colonize these two provinces up here. Because it's uh, they're almost at 50%. So they'll be able to be colonized, which is excellent. And then this army will be ready for war once they're all up to 1,000 men. We'll go and fight Macedonia with their 28 units. I don't know how that's going to go, but we'll give it a shot. That'll be fun. And the war with Macedonia will be in. Excellent. Okay, guys, I'm Ryan House. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the video and uh, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I will see you guys in the next Let's Play.